Hey there folks and welcome back to Project Chronicles. Tonight we're going to be doing a maintenance and flush on a tankless water heater. Um, we're also going to be installing the hardware necessary to do that because when I first installed the heater I had not installed it. Alrighty, so we are right back to where we were last time if y'all watched that video where I installed the hot water uh, filter. And uh, this here is my hot water heater and we are going to be cutting the cold water inlet and the hot water outlet installing a ball valve as well as a um, hose connection so we can connect our hose and hook up right there just to do a continuous flush. Let's get to it. here, back flush the heater, everything will be great. What for some reason stuck to my mind was that I can't close this hole. As I just discovered by spreading water all over the floor, there's nothing stopping water from spreading all over the floor. So for tonight, we're going to go ahead and finish the project we've got started, get the water heater maintenance going, but uh, I'll have to leave my hot water turned off until I can go get a couple of in caps for this. Alright, so now I've got my shutoffs installed. I've got the hot water heater completely isolated from both sides so no water can go through it. We've got cold water on, but of course hot water, that's just the, the backflow from the pipe, but it's only backflowing to the filter, it can't go any further. Right, so what I'm going to do now is take a washer hose. I'm going to cut it in half connect to each of these and then get my maintenance solution set up. I'll be right back with that. What I've got is a little submersible pond pump I had coupled with a half of a, a hot water or a, a washing machine hose. It's not the perfect connection at the pump because it doesn't fit the greatest but it should work. Uh, it's sitting in about two gallons of vinegar. I've got it hooked up here. I've got 
the water off to the rest of the house so it's going to back flush through the heater. The hot water heater is turned off. You want it turned off for this. Um, then over here I've got this water turned off and I've got it coming to a return hose right here. And I really want to make sure that is tight enough that it doesn't decide to come out one day. So, we're going to plug this up. I have went back to my breaker and turned this thing on. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. And uh, I'm going to awkwardly hold that down. That's unfortunate. It does not appear to be doing anything. Let me see why, and I'll be back. Why of the issue is because I had not reset the breaker after testing it, or re that GFCI. I did, pump kicked on, and we started spitting water out here. So I'm going to tighten that, and I'll be back. Alrighty folks, we had a bit of a problem. I had to go back to the hardware store one more time. That's always the rule. You always have to go one more time. What happened was these, uh, these hose fittings that I got, the three quarter inch national pipe thread. Now I know this and I wasn't thinking and you were probably screaming at me the whole time saying hose pipe thread and, or hose thread and pipe thread are not the same. And they're not the same. So when I went to put the uh, <laughs> the washing machine hose on, they start to thread. They get tight. Everything looks good. You put on the uh, you put on the pump, and vinegar starts spraying out at you. It's a wonderful experience. Um, also, as I mentioned before, water comes out of things that you don't have you know caps on. So. I got these ball valves, that way I didn't have to completely cut the thing apart and redo everything. It cost me a bit more money in gas, I have a long way from the hardware store, and it cost me uh, probably about 20 bucks more in fittings because these are about 10 bucks a piece and I had to get two of them. Actually back from the hardware store in the morning, I got these. These are three quarter uh, male pipe thread so it should go right on with female pipe thread it should go right on there without a problem convert it to fit the washing machine hoses I've got and it will stop it from shooting out all over the floor when not in use so we're gonna get that done <laughs> Alrighty, so I've got my submersible pump back in the bucket, hooked up here to the pipe going into the bib. I'm going to turn on that hose bib, turn on my return valve. We are still isolated from the rest of the house. And so hopefully, when I turn it on this time, vinegar won't spray everywhere. going for a couple hours with it being vinegar you need to run it for longer also I haven't ever done this in the previous two years or so but uh, 
it's running clear if you want to actually go ahead and get a shot here this is pretty much all that's left um, the red stuff I had been capturing in this sock and so the sock did work fairly well to capture just that red sludge which was all that wouldn't dissolve um, I did amp this up a little bit with a small amount of phosphoric acid which I just happen to have and I know they used to clean these with which is probably why it dissolves so well but uh, I have tested it and it seems to have restored the heating ability of the heater so what you do once you get in the, to the end of it is I've gone ahead and shut off and I've turned off the pump you close this ball valve and you leave the out, output open and then you are going to slowly turn on the half turn back on the heater but uh, I'm just going to fill it full and I've done this several times already but basically you want to make sure that there's no vinegar or acid or anything that you use your cleaning solution left in the heater this I'm going to go ahead and dump down the hand drain and at that point all we have to do is close this ball valve open this ball valve and open this ball valve and now we should have hot water. Uh, water heater came on. And it is very definitely hot water.